Hello everybody, how are you today? Welcome to London. Isn't it great? It's really good to be here with all of you and um, we're super proud to be in our fourth year of supporting uh, Startup Grind. So uh, unashamedly from me, a bit of a bigger picture view for these uh, turbulent times. And I start uh, with a moment that I will always remember for the rest of my life. Does anybody know what this was? London Olympics 2012, so it's my home city, I'm a Londoner, as you just heard, I was a bit of a sportsman when we weren't so good at the sport I was doing. Um, and this is the moment where Tim Berners-Lee was revealed at the centre of the stadium and up flashed, this is for everyone. The connection of sport, which I love, with my home city, which I love, with the spirit of the open web and its inventor, Tim Berners-Lee. And that was five years ago. Uh, and there were a billion fewer people connected then than there are now and this really is for everyone and that's the sort of big line I'd love you to hold in your head as I talk uh, for a bit. Now we're after lunch and so it's my job to kind of make sure we connect together and keep the spirit that you had this morning. If there's one person that inspires me more than Sir Tim it's Dame Stephanie Shirley, you all saw her. She is an incredible woman, 50 years ahead of her time probably. Uh, also an inspiration for all of us who are thinking about being entrepreneurs uh, today. But, you know, you could be forgiven for thinking sometimes that you should just crawl under the duvet in these turbulent times, whether it is <sighs> Brexit, uh, the future of the EU, the rise of populism, the unpredictability of the Trump presidency, the consequent swing factor role played by Mr. Putin, uh, the vital role played by China, huge amounts of uncertainty. It's not clear what value people place on science anymore. It's not clear what truth is. This sounds like turbulent times. Maybe we should just hide under the duvet and wait for things to settle down. Yeah? Well, I'd argue that would be exactly the wrong thing to do. What we need to do in these turbulent times is th see through the turbulence and back the big trends. And as I said, unashamedly, uh, big picture on this. When you step back and look at what is going on in the world, there's never been a better time to be alive. There's never been a better time to be alive. Um, infant mortality, poverty, malnutrition, illiteracy, these are falling faster than at any time in history. The risk of dying in a natural disaster or a war are at all time lows. So the big picture, there's never been a better time to be alive. I'd also argue there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. And here's why. Three trends, which I'd like your help to illustrate, and I want you to take off your startup and business hat and just think about these trends as you are a person, a consumer, a citizen. The first is the connection and access trend. So, audience participation here. Stop tweeting and doing whatever it is you're doing and coding, reading the press. How many people just say yes and raise your hand, but it needs to be a positive affirmation, like a religious meeting, we're in a religious place. How many people have a connected device with them now? Yes? Oh, come on, come on. No preacher would accept that, and I'm not a preacher, but you know. How many people have got a connected device? Yeah, excellent, well done. How many people have got two connected devices right now? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Three connected devices? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Four connected devices, anybody? Okay, so we're probably at about 2.5 per person in here. I don't know. I mean, that's my approximation. So we're the lucky majority, uh, and we are still a minority of people on the planet. So as William Gibson said, the future's already here. It's just unevenly distributed. We had a billion people since the 2012 opening ceremony come online for the first time, mobile first. The internet population is set to double over the next five years, broadly. A doubling of the internet population, more than 5 billion people connected, potentially 25 billion devices. You know this, and you know how transformational it is when you get a connection for the first time. I was in Kenya. You can buy a smartphone. When I was there, you could buy a smartphone for under $35. I was talking to somebody yesterday who'd bought one in India with a contract for under $8. You know, it's becoming the device is not the barrier, it's the data cost and access. And this is transformational, we all know this, in terms of access to information, all the world's information, in terms of access to people, all the world's people, and also in terms of access to the best, uh, to the best tools. 
Second question for you. How many people have used artificial intelligence today? Every hand should go up. If you've used Search or Gmail or YouTube or Maps from us and maybe some things from other people too, then you've benefited from machine learning and artificial intelligence. This is our team from London, DeepMind, uh, and AlphaGo, their computer that plays the game of Go. You probably have read about this. The game of Go has more possible moves than there are atoms in the universe. And therefore, playing this with a machine was seen as being something that would require a whole new way of working and coding to do this. And last year, um, this was a match against Lee Sedol, a grandmaster in the game. This is actually capturing a moment in the game. Where you can see here on the chairs, there's our operator, who's basically doing what the computer suggests. And on the other chair, is empty, because Lee Sedol was so shocked by the move that AlphaGo played they had to go to the toilet for 15 minutes to calm down. <laughs> and seriously, and um, the, the, the machine won four out of five games in the series. And afterwards, he said it had completely opened his mind to new possibilities in the game. The orthodoxy over thousands of years had been turned over by this new way of playing. And now there's a refreshing of the game and what's happening. Uh, we were recently in, in China playing the world champion uh, and in a three-game series, uh, one in two straight games. Uh, and again, it's opening up people's possibilities to what's possible, not just the computer dominating, but actually humans and better tools doing more things. So uh, one of the big things that's going to be happening more and more is everyone, this is for everyone, everyone has access to better tools. Many of you will be developing those tools, tools that can complement what people can do, save us time, make us smarter decisions. The DeepMind team are not just working on playing games. One of the other things they're working on is energy. So in Google data centers, we think they're pretty well run. DeepMind applied their uh, deep reinforcement learning to cooling, and they saved 40% of the electricity that we were using to cool data centers. And we already thought we were doing a pretty good job. 40%, that's a huge change. Um, they're working with Moorfields Eye Hospital here in London, using machine learning to look at um, retinal ophthalmology, ophthalmology which is the scans of your retina, um, because the machine can look at millions. And even the best ophthalmologists can only look at thousands in a career. And if the machine can help ophthalmologists identify signs of macular degeneration earlier, then we can improve outcomes for everyone. That's the kind of thing that's starting to accelerate. So first trend, access for everyone, a doubling of the population. Second trend, smarter tools for everyone and accelerating. Third trend is anybody, remember, consumer hat on. Anybody learned how to do something by watching a YouTube video? Yeah? Would anybody like to tell me what they've learned? Come on. Yeah, go on. How to assemble a pram. Was it a stroller, one of those unfolding things? Yeah, I need help with that too. Anybody else? Yeah. Photoshop, a technology, a tool. Yeah. Anybody else learned something? Yeah. Playing chords on a guitar. Music is very popular. What else have we learned over here? Anybody learned something? Sorry? Angular 2. Angular 2. A Google product. Surely they should be so simple you don't need to learn them with a video. But you're right. And, you know, when you think about it, what I hear often is people learning things about fashion and hair and makeup, how to tie a bow tie, how to cook, often how to fix things in the moment that they're broken. And when you think about your own experience, the video you watched when you learned something most recently probably wasn't from a brand, or, from a brand or a company. It was probably from a somebody like you. It was probably from a person who was just passionate about what they're doing. As, as was mentioned, I was a rower. The reason you become a rower, or you used to, was because you're terrible at all other sports. So when my younger son was eight years old, and he said, I want to be a goalkeeper so I can get in my school football team, teach me how to take a goal kick, because they're tough. I pull out the phone in the field. We watch this American soccer coach. We both learn over the next two hours from this American guy how to take goal kicks. Even I can now take a goal kick. And, and it's that kind of ability to learn in the moment you need it from somebody you don't know that's transformational. So the way we learn and who we learn from is also uh, changing. I'm going to talk a bit more about that uh, as well. So uh, as I think about skills and my upbeat, despite the turbulence, I think about the fact that in Europe we've got tremendous entrepreneurs 
tremendous innovators, and we always have had that. We just don't necessarily celebrate it as much as some of our louder voiced, more confident uh, colleagues on this uh, planet. 4.7 million developers today, professional developers in Europe. The US has 4.1 million. And we're not adrift in the way that we might think. We're more spread out, we're more culturally diverse. I'd argue that was a pretty good thing. Um, and there is a risk, however, that people are left behind. If this is for everyone, the EU itself commissioned some research and it said that you know, half of people in Europe lack some of the basic digital skills that are needed. And for jobs in Europe, 90% needed some aspect of digital skill. And yet they projected nearly a million jobs would go unfilled because of a lack of digital skills. So we uh, have been running programs in, across the whole of Europe where we're trying to offer basic digital skills training that can help people in business. Some is, it, some is coding, some of it is using analytics, social media, search and online marketing, and so on. And um, we've been blown away by the demand. We've already trained well over two million Europeans and uh, a million Africans. Uh, the demand's been amazing. Some countries we've targeted towards youth in Spain, particularly where there's a serious problem with youth unemployment. But actually, in countries where it's been open for everyone, the average age has been over 40, and the percentage of women has been close to 50%. These are quite encouraging in terms of this really is for everyone, not just the proportions that are on some of the technical courses at university, and people are coming to this learning when they need it, and I think that's also something uh, to feel positive about. So a huge um, shift in how people are learning, and we're trying to play our part uh, on, digital, uh, on digital skills uh, as well. Now, Google for Entrepreneurs, you'll, you'll know, is a proud supporter of Startup Grind. Um, and we have operations across 125 countries in terms of what we're doing. Uh, campus, uh, we have now six campuses globally. This is the one we opened in London. We opened here first as an experiment. Could we bring startups together, do some mentoring, but mainly help to be a catalyst uh, for a movement of startups? And London was already uh, on the up. And it's been absolutely hugely successful in terms of helping startups gain confidence, learn from each other, meet, uh, share ideas, get mentoring, access to capital. Across our campuses, we've now seen startups funded in excess of half a billion dollars uh, of capital raised by those uh, startups. Um, at London, when we started, about 20% of the people working in our London campus, all different startups, about 20% were female. We're now over 40% and seeing that improve as well, because this is uh, for everyone, and we need to play our part. If we want technology to work for everyone, it needs to be built by everyone. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the amazing startups from our campus in Madrid. Uh, they help you learn languages from song, song lyrics. Really great, because it's a natural thing. We sing songs in different languages, and you can do karaoke, and you can learn from, uh, from song uh, lyrics and they've been mentored, and their revenues are now starting to come in and growing at 30 and 40% or more. It's a great uh, and nice example of the kinds of things that people are doing very entrepreneurially all around uh, the region. We have demo days uh, at Google. We did our first demo day in Europe um, just uh, last month, and uh, 10 startups, very diverse interests across European countries pitching to um, some of the best investors uh, in Europe. Really interesting to see the diversity. We had an app which was all about uh, helping managers get feedback. Uh, the other end of the spectrum, we had an app which was all about helping women, to, women get feedback on fertility. And uh, all of them, you know, really exciting ideas, distinctive ideas, and ideas that uh, people could fund. Um, this is the winning uh, example here, which was um, a dairy farming app. This really is for everyone, including cows. And so, just to end my comments here, you know, you can tell that I'm an optimist in these turbulent times, because when you look at the big picture, the number of people you can reach is exploding. The acceleration and the doubling of the internet population, the biggest single trend in our time. Everybody online, mobile first, many mobile only. Secondly, technology is allowing us to build smarter tools that work for everyone. And thirdly, we're all starting to learn in new ways, in different ways, at different points in our lives from different people. All of those things make me really positive uh, about the future and how we can inspire the next generation, just like the London 2012 games aim to inspire a generation into sport. I hope that 
uh, you feel inspired by some of the big picture trends, keep them in mind when the times are tougher. Um, and I certainly feel very inspired by the energy I see when I visit campus and talk to people like you. So thank you for what you're doing. You are the future, and I'm backing on all of you. Thanks very much.